everybody. Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. This is episode 35 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. As you can probably already guess, you got me in the car today. I am actually on my way home from work uh, after a long day off that I spent as a day on. Um, <laughs> but, you know, just typical typical deal. Um, the beauty of a four-day work week is it gives me the opportunity to go in on my day off and get some business handled if I need to. Uh, What I want to talk to you guys about today is something that I actually think a lot about um, because it directly affects me in the industry, and that's sort of where the future of of what us technicians do is going to look like. Um, I've been in the industry for about 12 years, which is a long time, but it's not a long time, and I've seen a fair amount of things change, but I don't really think it's changed at the rate that we're about to see over the next five to seven years. Uh, with improvements in technology and, and the way vehicles are moving, um, I think we're going to see a lot of different things. I think it's going to really change the way we have to think as technicians and really our responsibility as technicians too. Uh, as always, this comes from a standpoint of a Volkswagen technician. So I know some other manufacturers are already doing these things now, but you're going to see these these type of behaviors trickle down into you know every level of vehicle, whether it's the most highline Range Rover or, you know, the, uh, the humble Honda Civic or Toyota Corolla. Um, so I think the best place to start is really talking about the, the diagnostic end. And I think we're going to start to see a lot more guided diagnostics. Now with Volkswagen, we have our system and our scan tool. It's called guided fault finding. And basically we scan the entire vehicle and any faults that present themselves, the scan tool populates test plans for. So let's say there's a fault for the coolant temperature sensor. The scan tool automatically populated tests for the technician to run on the coolant temp sensor and a couple of other things. But I think we're gonna see that at a level totally, totally different than we are now. We're gonna see it for everything. And you're gonna see where technician hooks up the scan tool, runs all the faults, And it's not just that the scan tool populates the test, it pushes them through every single step of what they want to be done. So basically the technician, even more so than it already exists now, is sort of gonna become the the servant to the scan tool. Basically just be a pair of hands um, to actually put test leads on stuff and enter values into the scan tool. And then the scan tool is gonna decide from there what is gonna happen. Now, I know you guys are saying, Charles, this is already going on. I know, um, but it's going to look a lot different. It's going to pull the technician's brain out of the equation and force the technician to only do what the scan tool says. And luckily, the scan tools are going to be getting better and better at this. You know, when I first started, 2004 was the first year that we had to use this guided fault finding system for warranty for Volkswagen. And um, it was terrible, it was, it was god awful. It took forever, test plans wouldn't load, information wasn't there. Uh, we still fight a lot of that today, but it's gotten so much better over the last 10 years that it's, it's crazy how much better it is. So we're gonna see improvements in that. We're gonna see more virtual type repairs where we hold a camera up to the car and there's someone at you know a technical service line, hotline or something like that looking at the vehicle live rather than us snapping pictures and emailing it to them, which, you know, at this point in time is so primitive, it seems. But um, like a lot of car manufacturers, they're ahead of their game on a, a lot of ends, but they're so far behind with processes and new technology that it's, it's really kind of sad. I had a conversation with one of the boys in the shop the other day about, you know, us creating these um, repair tickets, these help tickets for when we have a problem and how much of a hassle it is and why we can't just do it all on mobile. I mean, we're submitting pictures. I'm taking the pictures, obviously, with my phone. I'm not about to get a digital camera for this. Uh, We're submitting video online, so you have to email it to the work computer and then upload it through, um, through Internet Explorer because that's the only one that works. You know, why aren't we dealing with mobile apps um, at this point in time? But, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Um, but there's going to be more of that. There's going to be more of the forced guidance 
through the scan tool and through the vehicle, not just, you know, the way it is now where we plug it in, answer a couple of questions and, you know, it says put, put an ECM in it, which is generally what it says. It's going to be significantly more guided and force guided with more direct input, even direct live input from like a helpline, Volkswagen of America or whatever manufacturer it might be. Uh, manufacturers are also getting better at catching problems earlier. Um, I can tell you that today, Volkswagen of America is probably a million times better at catching problems early than they were in 2005, 2006. That's why at the dealership level, we have so many new car updates. They're sending out you know, the regional managers to go and check cars and find problems and uh, at a rate they never did in the past 10 years. So we're gonna see more of that we're going to see, you know, that first time you bring your car in for service is going to have a lot more updates than, than a vehicle traditionally had. And I think that's a good thing. I don't think that's something to be scared of. Um, you can only do so much field testing from a manufacturer standpoint because no one's going to put their car through, through what, uh, you know, some of your average drivers are going to put their car through. So we'll see those increase even more than they have. Um, so you're going to see more technical service bulletins, more required vehicle updates, more of that kind of thing. And that, I, like I said, I think that is a good thing. We're actually going to see probably more over the air updates as time goes on. Um, so let's say there's an update for your radio, rather than you having to bring your vehicle to the dealership, us, you know, plug the scan tool in or load a disc in, these radios are going to start updating automatically or scanning for an update and updating every three months, sort of like your computer at home does. When Windows needs an update, it tells you. When your cell phone has an update, it tells you. Vehicles are already coming with their own IP addresses and uh, are basically mobile hotspots. And I think as that technology becomes more common in vehicles, we're gonna just start, we're not even gonna have to have the car at the dealership for these updates to occur. Uh, that's a good and bad thing. It's a great thing as long as it doesn't fail. But, you know, a, a glitch or a weirdness or a change in voltage can definitely cause some, some big time uh-oh problems, you know, smoking ECMs or radios or whatever modules trying to update because you drive through a tunnel and it cuts out halfway or whatever. Um, Volkswagen's actually getting a lot better about their updates. It's no longer downloaded over the, over the scan tool straight into the car. It's loaded on the scan tool and then load it into the car. So we're able to actually have a lot better success with uh, trying to update a second time rather than you know rolling the dice and um, having an update fail and then you just paid for a module. So the over the air updates are actually already exist. Uh, Volkswagen came out with CarNet, which I have a lot of mixed feelings about. It's basically the OnStar of 2014. Um, I don't know how many people are paying for the subscription of it, but we actually get a report of vehicle errors, something as simple as a tire pressure monitor light coming on. Uh, our service manager can see the report and see how many vehicles in the area have had a tire pressure monitor light come on. So you'll see more things like that. Um, I have a lot of mixed feelings about that. You know, there's a, there's a big, uh, big time, big brother factor to, to what that's going to look like that scares me a little bit, but uh, it's coming. Uh, I'm, the government's gonna mandate it, I'm sure, and uh, in the name of, of cleaner cars and you know safer cars, they're gonna mandate all these things be downloaded directly to the dealership. And we'll see how it works. You know, it's Just like any system that gets mandated, the, the early ones are gonna have hiccups, but they'll get better and better and better. I think tire pressure monitors are a really good example of that. Early on in 04, when they came out with the tor in the Torag, it was a nightmare system, the Phaeton 2 nightmare system. Now it's actually pretty good, and uh, for the most part, I would say 99% of the time, the issues that we have with tire pressure monitors are either broken monitors because someone got new tires, or their tire pressure is just low, and most of the time it's just tire pressures being low. I also think, and this is the one that sort of scares me the most uh, professionally, is I think we're going to start to see more of a split in technicians. So right now we have A, B, C, basically A, B, C technicians. A technicians are your top level guys. B technicians are your guys that can do almost everything. 
but sort of get hung on some of the higher level advanced diagnostics. Your C level guys are your parts changers, brakes, tires, that kind of thing. And then you have the Service Express, which is, you know, just below that. Um, not below that in, you know, any sense, but skill level or experience. I think we're going to really see a split. I think the A level technician number is going to go down. And I think the need for the A level technician number is going to go down too. Um, again, like I mentioned before, you're going to see the manufacturer really taking hold a lot more than they do and forcing technicians to do it in a more guided way than we already have. So that means the need for someone like an aid level technician that can really think outside the box and analyze a vehicle's problem and come to a diagnosis on their own, that's going to be less and less and less with every new generation of car that comes out. Your B-level technicians are going to be decreased immensely, probably more than any other field, you know, any other level of technician, because there's going to be so much less of a need for someone that doesn't have the advanced diagnostic skills that can do some diagnostic. Uh, they're going to get moved down to more of a C-level technician. And remember that at each of these levels, the pay is different. So an A-level technician, let's say, makes 30 bucks an hour. A B-level technician, say, 25 bucks an hour. Um, and a C-level technician is a $15 an hour max guy. Um, you're going to see these, these positions slide backwards. So the majority of the A technicians are going to slide into a B or C type role and the B technicians are going to slide to a C technician. The C technician is going to, the number of them is going to be higher. The need is going to be more. So you'll, you'll keep those guys. And then the service express or quick lube will be what it is, you know, fast, fast service, quick oil change, quick tire rotation and all that. And that, uh, that'll probably just stay where it is. The problem is that the A-level technicians, because only the top level is going to stay there, they're going to start needing to be paid more. Um, their value is going to go up, and that's good if you're a really good A-level technician. That's bad if you're a low-level A technician or a B technician. So you're going to see this split where the really high-level guys are probably going to start moving more towards the manufacturer side. They're going to go work for Mercedes. They're going to go work for Volkswagen. They're going to work for Ford and Chevy. And the low-level A technicians are going to be pushed into the B or C level because essentially we're going to move more and more and more towards a technician just being a parts replacer. And it's going to be forced even more than it already is through the manufacturer. The good thing for the A-level technicians is the need and the aftermarket is going to go up, I think. I think having highly experienced technicians in the aftermarket is going to be more important as manufacturers push this, you know, manufacturer repair only type mindset even more than it already is. So I think the dealerships are going to suffer a lot because of that, but um, you know, that's not a bad thing. I think that uh, the, the automotive industry has been stuck in this 1960s protocol for so long that uh, it may take a, a violent shake to, to get it out of it and for them to move forward and become better. The problem is, is that's going to cause a lot of pain in the interim. So, um, you know, we'll see what, we'll see what happens with it, but I don't know. It's an interesting, it's an interesting mental exercise for me. Um, part of it's really exciting. Part of it's pretty scary. Part of it makes me concerned for a lot of my peers and, and what it's going to look like for them. Um, I think you're going to see automotive software engineers, the demand for those guys skyrocket um, as, as we load modules down and update them over the air. There's going to be a lot of demand for someone to engineer software for these, uh, these modules and these over the air type things. Um, I got to tell you, if you're a technician out there now and you are a B level technician, it's time to up your game guys. You really need to uh, work on your diagnostic skills and get good with diagnosing computers. The, uh, the old timers that don't want to do it anymore, there's a place for you in the aftermarket, but 
Um, even that's going to be going away because the aftermarket is, is going to change too. As the dealership level changes, the aftermarket has to change. So it'll be an interesting thing. I think the next five years are going to be kind of painful for, uh, for technicians in the automotive world. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be a tech or, you know, if you're going to school for it, don't let that discourage you. Cars are always going to be broken and uh, it's just going to evolve and change in the way that we, we repair them. So I don't know. It's going to be an interesting ride and uh, I, I don't know what it's going to look like for sure, but um, I can tell you it'll be interesting. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. This is one that, I, again, I love to hear your thoughts on. Uh, I, think, I think you guys got some really cool interpretations, especially you aftermarket guys. I love to know where you're at on this, this topic. But uh, as always, post your comments in the comments section below. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. If you like the video, throw it a thumbs up. Um, don't forget, you can also share it, which I always appreciate that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you.